No Man's Sky Next is finally here. Here's why it's a great time to go back. Hello, I'm Louise and I'm joined by Matt. Hello. And we've been playing No Man's Sky Next, the latest update to Hello Games' incredible procedurally generated space sim that literally has an infinite universe to explore, but it's had a stack of new additions we've been playing. So first off, Matt, have you been enjoying it? I really have. I, I, I like the original version. Um, and this kind of enriches all the best bits about it, I think. Um, and, and, and crucially, I think, uh, that multiplayer box that gets ticked by this is incredible um, and it makes so much difference. I think, uh, yeah, like, it's a game where you pour all that time into um, and being able to share that with a friend is just is awesome. Yeah, we've, we've been playing together and I think the fact that I always enjoyed the sort of loneliness and atmospheric nature of No Man's Sky. I've but pretty much ruined that for you. you but you've completely <laughs> ruined that. So what you can <laughs> what you can see is, is our gameplay. Now, the first thing you'll notice is there's a massive difference and there's now a third-person camera mode. So it really changes things in a way that I didn't really expect. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that I found first time around with Nomad Sky is that the character models are, are, are really good and it's quite sort of a, there's a sense of humour in the way that everything's designed. But because you are alone so much of the time, the only chance you get to see that is when you go to the space stations and the space stations are a little bit repetitive first time around. So being able to see your character all the time and you've got your little sort of shoulder mounted doodad that's looking around and stuff, it just immediately has loads more character and you kind of have a sense of who you are and what your place is in this universe, which is great. I think also it has that sense of, because there's this amazing sense of scale in No Man's Sky, you've got northern lights, you've got rings around planets. Totally. If you're skipping across that with a friend, and we uh, we sampled it both in creative and normal mode, because in creative you switched your race, but the coming into the sort of talking about multiplayer now, is the fact that you can absolutely do everything together. So even from the start of the game, if you want to play a normal, you can do bits and pieces as instead of being alone, you're doing it with a friend and you're working together on it, which really makes a difference. That's, a, I mean, it's it's a literal game changer, especially in terms of building stuff, which we'll get onto in a bit. But like the fact that you can, you know, sit on your planet and and work together to create something is 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 really exciting. And I think um, you're going to see some sort of amazing community creations off the back of that. But more, like even just the busy work, just being able to share items with people. So like we had loads of times where you know I didn't have enough carbon or you know like, right. we, we were down one metal plate to make something and just being able to quickly like share that stuff is really cool um, and it really does like change the tack of the game entirely so you, you know, that shared experience um, you know it, it is great but you still have the solo stuff if you want it but yeah, it really resonated with me previously sort of with finding resources this is very much a resource heavy game I mean the first hour of the game has been uh, sort of rejigged to make it so that you're in a more streamlined path but there's certainly for each of those things, you have to pick up multiple resources to get there and, and helping with that is amazing. And you also don't feel as bad going, oh, I need to get this, I need to get that because different elements mean you can now refine um, in a, using a machine, which means that you can actually use different things for the same purpose. So you might need to refuel your launch thrusters and you can do that with X or you can do it with Y. So there's always, now there's multiple ways to do things. It's not leaving you stranded on a planet which doesn't seem to have any carbon that you really need. So it, it removes that as well. So there's much more variation in the way that you can even refuel all your bits and build your tech, which is actually quite refreshing. Absolutely, yeah. And one thing, um, we should mention about the multiplayer specifically, I think, is that it has changed significantly, but it's still based on like a party mode. So you and potentially four friends um, can all play together, and those are the people whose avatars you can see. But um, if you chance upon each other, just another player randomly, they will still appear as the orbs that were um, were in the in the in the previous update. Um, and you can sort of do things like build monuments together and stuff like that. But if you want to get the experience, the full multiplayer experience of you sharing. Um, you know all of, the, all of your equipment and building stuff together then you need to be in a party one of the things that they can do as well is you can just randomly join a party and and sort of I think Hello Games described it as um, hunt other players but you don't actually get anything from killing other people so Good. like probably best avoided yeah I mean you did try it didn't stop you from <laughs> trying with your laser just a bit of friendly lasering between yeah. yes. colleagues wonderful <laughs> Um, one thing that we definitely have to talk about is how different it looks. Now, it looked lovely before, but No Man's Sky Next has added, I think, the, the massive list on Hello Games sites talking about textures and lighting. But what you can actually see in terms of each planet, you've got mountains, you've got much more structural variation, and that kind of adds a sense of verticality to it, which 
we'll come on to later with the bases, but you can, because you can now head under with the, the terrain tool, you can build bases underground, you can go to tops of mountains where you'll find creatures. So there's much more, you're not just going along a flat planet, which previously was very much the case. Yeah, it could definitely feel a little bit flat in the past and and, and, and sometimes the kind of procedural nature of it was, was really apparent. But this, I think, for me, from start to finish, definitely feels more like a... Uh, you know, a, a more real world, in that, especially when you're kind of coming down onto the planet and you're flying through the atmosphere, and then you're skimming across it, and you've got what feels like more kind of like almost modelled mountains and things that reflect real life places. Um, it, it's it's much more evocative, I think, in that respect. And I think, in speaking of sort of skimming across the planet, you can you don't just have yourself in third person; you can also bring your ship into third person as well, which is really nice. Uh, which we discovered quite late on, going, oh wow, we can do that. So you go into the ship, and the same uh, controls that you would just switch to third person um, and, and when you're wandering around you can just change to your spaceship and it's very Star Wars you were There's, very excited about I was how very Star Wars excited is. because it also means that you can boost that way as well so you've got the, the stars passing you by you can head up to space stations you can head back down and land so there's something it turns it more into the sort of action adventure type thing than it's definitely really evocative yeah and it, it really has changed the direction of the game I think being able to see yourself and being you know if you're in an aerial dogfight, being absolutely able to see the ships and stuff is um, is really cool. I think as well, uh, the base building that I was talking about earlier, in terms of height, um, Hello Games Sean Murray has been tweeting out various things that people have found, and already someone has built a base far too high. It start, <laughs> <laughs> it's completely starts off um, with someone just happily wandering at the top of a base, and then they jump off, and it's literally like a hundred stories they're just and falling they, for minutes yeah they, they just say it's unlimited unlimited base building and we'll definitely see some really interesting things that way you and I we managed to build a <laughs> two room shed but I we did build it shed. together you leave our shed alone. and then you left all our tech our portable tech outside the shed so even if we were in the shed to hide from the radioactive storms of which there are many um you know, you couldn't use any of the tech, you know, so I, that was helpful. I never never thought about that. That was really helpful. We can move them. Yeah, we can. You can take them with you. So the fact that you can... That's also a, a, a good thing in that it did come with base building, but if you're adding things to your base on your planet, which you can now build anywhere, so it's not just restricted to the big open space in this <laughs> planet. So now you've got foundations and walls and you can build a bit of wood or you can upgrade as you progress. Um, but you can do that anywhere, which is a lovely touch, actually. It's really cool. I feel like the gauntlet has been laid down now for the for the sort of creative internet community, the same people who are building, like, you know, life-size Death Stars in Minecraft and things like that. Like... When those guys get their hands on this, I think they're going to do some amazing things. Um, perhaps even more amazing than my luxury shed. Uh, yes, your luxury. Well, speaking of your luxury shed, and the complete opposite of that is the fact that there's now freighters that you can get your hands on much easier. Now, it used to be very much something of the very rich players in No Man's Sky could previously have freighters, but now you have the chance to actually get a freighter, which, if you haven't seen them before, are almost like a portable base. You've got loads of space. Um, you can have all your stuff in there, so basically you can just fly around with your riches and all your nice collected things. You've got to love collecting collecting all the things in No Man's Sky. <laughs> you can't collect literally all the things. I want all You'll the things. You'll be there forever. Yeah, it's a really cool touch. Um, so we actually didn't find any in our games because um, essentially it's almost a random event. So you'll, you'll jump through to, to a certain place and you'll see a freighter being attacked. If you help that freighter fight off the attackers, then essentially they give you it, which is really very generous. That's nice. Um, and then when you have it, you can send out fleets and things like that. So again, like another cool touch that just stands a little bit more motivation for for staying in the game like another thing to, to sort of keep pushing forward and find and finally uh we didn't play with it but there's exocraft racing so you can set up races on on planets i mean that like this is pretty awesome having spent a lot of time in in the sky just walking slowly yes. across the the surfaces of planets and occasionally running fast yeah and being able to again. sort of actually race on them is, is lovely and it's another touch that embraces that kind of multiplayer aspect and the fact that you know it's giving you reasons to hang out and do fun stuff with your with your mates or louise or exactly or me so that's all the reasons that it's a great time to return to no man's sky now that the no man's sky next update has come out please let us know what you're excited about in the comments below or if you have any questions drop us a like if you enjoyed matt being really mean to me and if you like videos just like this one don't forget to subscribe to logitech g